guys, we're here at the Geek Craft Expo here in Portland, Oregon. It is a gathering of local artisans who are uh, here to celebrate their love for all things pop culture and just the nerd realm. Uh, we have everything from, from t-shirts to metalworking to leatherworking to uh, like bead crafts and all anything basically you can think of. Uh, somebody has made it and is here showing it off. Uh, so check it out. Hey guys, Des here and I'm here with Elizabeth and uh, she works with the GeekCon Expo and uh, we got a few questions for her here. Uh, so Elizabeth, what exactly is going on here? What do we have? Why do you guys do this? So this is a handmade geeky craft fair. Um, we do them in different cities all around the country. And what we do is we showcase local crafters and artists who make super rad, cool, geeky stuff. So what kind of stuff are you looking for? Is it anything on the map? Or you guys go kind of specific for the art that you find here? What we do try to do, we we look for the you know the highest quality, most original, just like most you know badass sort of crafters. But it is curated uh, with an eye to originality. Like if we have one exhibitor who say does really rad hats, you know we try not to have different exhibitors doing the same stuff so that they're competing with each other. So it can kind of go all over the map from like steampunk to like traditional superhero stuff to you know math equations. If you saw uh, C. Anna Morris's stuff. So anything, anything with enough passion can be geeky, but yeah, we know it when we see it. <laughs> That's outstanding. So yeah. why do this? What was it that made your organization want to do something like this? Sure, sure. So Daniel Way is a comic book writer. Uh, the other co-founder, Kim Matsuzaki, she is in, uh, was in video games. I've done comics and sold comics. So we've been to a lot of conventions and comic conventions are amazing and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but they're also getting more diversified, which is a wonderful thing in and of itself. But a lot of smaller businesses and smaller crafters, it's hard for them to get as much attention at conventions like that. So we have something that's 100% dedicated to handmade crafts. So everybody coming in the door is looking for exactly this stuff and it's just a good way to support you know, these crafters. That's actually a fantastic point because if you get these huge cons, it's more and more difficult to be, get a booth, to become an exhibitor. And then if you try and take a booth like this just to a Saturday market or whatever, the chances of you finding that exact you know, niche market is gonna be tough, but having something like this is brilliant. That's really great. Okay, I have, I have a personal question for you. What is the coolest thing you have seen at any one of these that you've been to? If you were to come up with a top-notch thing, what would it be? A top-notch thing? You know, I have a weakness for dolls. Uh, there's a silly kitten dolls here. Does these crazy dolls out of recycled and upcycled materials. There's also Truax designs over there, which does like the carbonite stuff. It looks like Han Solo and carbonite, but it's anything in carbonite. Yeah, it's, hard, it's very, very hard to narrow it down. I'm sure there's like a million things that I'm going to remember right after this question. But yeah, it's everything's great. Everything's amazing. So. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, hope you have a great time here. And let's go take a look at some of the, uh, the people around here, shall we? Des back here with Sam. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Glad you're here. Uh, we were walking by and taking a look at all the exhibitors and we were really impressed with your leatherworking and woodworking. But at the end of the day, what really brought us to you is that on top of all this, you got a webcomic that you do here. Oh. You said it's daily updated? Uh, not daily updated. Uh, we're doing weekly updates. Weekly updated, so, yeah, that's we right. Push, weekly uh, update. We push on Wednesdays, which is the traditional release date for uh, you know, physical comics. That's awesome. Well, hey, let's talk for a little bit about each of the things that you got going on here. First, you got some really cool leatherworking there. What got you into leatherworking and why geek craft leatherworking? Why Wonder Woman? Why Doctor Who? Yeah, well, uh, I originally uh, got into leatherworking because I wanted to... I wanted a leather journal for myself, mm. uh, just for you know as a daily planner for work, things like that. Um, and it just kind of took off from there. You know, started making the pouches, started doing like uh, the wet molding stuff. Um, got into the tooling, the artistic aspect of it. Right, um, right. It's just like really rewarding being able to make something with your own hands and uh, kind of give it that kind of rustic, genuine, authentic type of feel to it. You know, it's like um, a lot of these materials. Um, 
you know, you look at the pictures, but it really has a different uh, a feel and a sense to it. When you're actually handling it, holding it, absolutely, uh, especially with especially with leather, since it's an organic material and it will like it'll wear in and break down over time. Well, I was looking at your like your roll over there, and that is super cool. Just taking a look yeah. at that and uh, thinking, you know, I got a steampunk costume, a Renaissance fair <laughs> costume, and it would fit with both of those. So, I mean, that thing is outstanding. Absolutely, yeah. It kind of looks like a, like a bedroll. A, exactly, yeah. a bedroll. It's <laughs> precisely what I was thinking. And then uh, you got your woodworking here as well. So you do leather work. You got a shop at your house or something that you do all this with? <laughs> yeah, we have a, just have like a, a garage shop that I can, uh, you know, do, do some. Uh, the, the routing and the necessary awesome. like, cuts on and things like that. Yeah. Do you play dice games? You play D and D or anything like that? Yeah, I play D and D. I have a um, I have a group. Um, we do like a, we do a telecommute thing right now. Oh, uh, that's so awesome. It's like, a, like a web like a web conference in. Very cool. Uh, since we're all in different cities. Just, yeah. And then of course, tell me about your web comic. What's it called? Yeah, uh, the web comic's called uh, Dino Time Cop Force. Dino, t <laughs> I'm hooked. <laughs> Sold. You can, you can find it at <laughs> DinoTimeCopForce.com. Uh, it's about time traveling dinosaurs uh, that police the timeline. That's awesome. Um, it's just like kind of lighthearted, fun, uh, like a humorous type of strip. Fantastic. Well, uh, Sam Wright, yeah. thank you very, very much for talking with thank us. You. We love your stuff. Hey, guys, check out Sam. What's your website? Um, the website uh, for Heart, Wood, and Leather is just, just uh, it's on Etsy. It's an Etsy, it's Etsy, Etsy? It's Etsy storefront, so you can just look up Heart, Wood, and Leather. That's H-A-R-T, like the, the stag or the deer. Mm -hmm. uh, Dino Time Cop Force, dinotimecopforce.com. Great. Thanks a lot, Sam. We'll see you later. Hey guys, I'm here with Nick and Modulus Props, and I gotta I tell you, this is fantastic. This looks super cool. Um, if you guys wanna buy me this, you would be my best friend. Uh, <laughs> Nick, why masks, why these props? Why did you wanna do this? Well, I've always had a thing for masks, and usually where I get my inspiration is from video games that I play, or movies I see, or uh, comic books I read. Oh yeah. I think that's where you can find the best masks, so I've got you know, a few from the Borderlands video game series, uh, a few from Bioshock, just things that I picked out where I really like the aesthetic style of the video game mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, and I love taking something that exists in a video game and making it a real world, actual object that you can hold in your hand. I think there's something really neat about that. Well, and you do a phenomenal job with it. These masks look so accurate and so real at the same time. I was looking at these earlier and telling myself, I feel like these are the masks that the Spicers wore. Like this, this is a real life artifact of actually one of them. So very well done, Thank sir. You. How do you do this? What process do you go through to make these? So usually what I do is I start with a, a sculpt, um, a clay sculpt typically, where I, I do the master version of the thing out of clay. I'll interrupt you. You sculpt these by hand? These are all sculpted by hand. Wow. I, I get asked if they're 3D printed, but nothing here is 3D printed. It's all sculpted by hand. That's incredible. <laughs> so after sculpting, I will make a mold of it, a silicone mold, um, and then that allows me to cast more copies of it in resin, right. in plastic resin. So that's what all these are. These are copies of the original that I've created. Right. And then you do the painting as well. I do the painting as well, which is usually the part that takes the longest. Obviously. Painting, yes. And it's all hand painted or do you airbrushing or? A little bit of both. Uh, mostly mostly hand brushed, uh, but a little bit of airbrushing. So what would you say is your like masterpiece, your favorite piece that you've ever made? My favorite piece is I've made is usually whatever I've made the most recently. Um, <laughs> Isn't that always the case? <laughs> yeah, this the uh, Dishonored mask there, the gold one, mm -hmm. uh, That's I love the look of the metal. It's cold cast metal, so it's still plastic, but it's got um, metal powder mixed in, oh. and I just love the look that you can get with it. If you um, paint it and then buff it, you can get it to look like metal. It's still plastic, but it, yeah. it gives the feel of real metal. Well, it looks outlandishly authentic. Just, Thanks. I mean, it looks genuinely like metal. Uh, I came over and I picked it up to take a look at it. Same thing with the wrench here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I touched it expecting it to be steel. And, right. you know, it's this plastic yeah. look and it's, wow, so good. Thank you. So, why masks then? What is it about masks that intrigue you? I think the, the thing about masks is that you can, you can change your identity into something totally different just by putting covering your face mm. and putting on some other persona that has a different expression uh, and, and you can just change you know change everything about you just by the way your face looks yeah absolutely. and I think that's what interests me about masks and you could be a 
normal, friendly-looking person, and you throw on one of these things, and yeah. people are going to look at you entirely differently. Yeah, you put on an angry-looking mask, and suddenly you're an angry-looking person. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Well, Nick Wright, yes. thank you so, so much for my talking pleasure. to us. Uh, where can we reach you? Where can we see more of this stuff? Uh, people can find me on my website, which is modulusprops.com. I'm also Modulus Props on pretty much all the social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all Modulus Props, props, all one word. Thank you very much, guys. Check out Modulus Props, and we'll see you later. I'm here with Sienna, and we have probably some of the coolest starts I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Sienna, why don't you tell us about some of what you got here? What do you do? Why is your art special? Um, so I use a technique called numberism. I draw entirely with numbers and equations by hand. Um, and those numbers that I use all mean something, so it's not random. I use numbers from the wonderful world of science. Um, <laughs> I can show you an example. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this one right here. He's drawn with chemistry and physics that explain how cats see in the dark and how they have eye shine. So it's based off of the tapetum lucem, which is a reflective crystalline material at the back of their eye. Uh, so for them, when light enters their eye, it scatters the tapetum lucem, it bounces, and is absorbed by rod cells in the periphery. So the math here is uh, it's Rayleigh scattering equations, which explains what happens to that photon. There's a chemical formula for uh, retinol, which is important in scotopic or low light vision. And there's the speed of light in metric. That's fantastic. Wow. And the next one, we talked about this one earlier, and I, I love the galaxy that you have here. Why don't you describe this? So this one's pretty fun. Uh, this arm of the galaxy is Newton's second law of motion and the Einstein field equations. And then this arm is Schrodinger's wave collapse, which you see here, and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So that's meant to represent uh, the grand unified theory, unifying Newtonian and quantum physics into one. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you see force equals mass times acceleration yeah. here and everything else. <laughs> it, it, it's incredible. And, you know, you have the heart and yeah. the galaxies. And uh, well, what about this one? What's this one right here? That one is a chemical formula for oxytocin. It's commonly mm. referred to as the bonding chemical or the mm -hmm. love hormone. Um, so it's really important in how we bond to each other and experience empathy. Moments that we would experience oxytocin release in the brain heavily and reliably would be during intimacy, childbirth, breastfeeding, and long duration skin to skin contact like hugging or kissing. Mm -hmm. And when it's released, we experience trust, pleasure, and empathy. Um, you also experience small amounts of oxytocin released in your brain when you share a meal with someone. Um, so even if someone you don't like, if you have a meal with them often enough, you will eventually empathize with them. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Man, that's so cool. So why numberism? Why did you want to take this path of art? Um, so originally, I wasn't drawing with math and science. It was the numbers of the clock, 1 through 12. Oh, okay. um, all of this I do because I need it, and it's something that I'm not naturally good at. So my first series was about living in the present, which mm. I've always struggled with. So I was drawing beautiful moments drawn with the numbers of the clock to show them passing. Um, moments like this piece here. Okay. Um, also the tree there. So you see the moment passing, and for me, it just reminds me to be here now. Um, the math and science series is an extension of how I learn, so I'm self-taught in science and in arts. That's um, incredible. Well, thank you. Um, I do enjoy doing it, and there's lots of really good resources for being self-taught now. It's a lot easier than it used to be. But studying science and having no background in math makes studying science hard. Um, yeah. And I'm interested in the brain and studying neuroscience, and that's really hard. Um, so I use this technique to connect the science to me. Um, so as a visual, I'm a visual learner. And so I study science, and I draw where it lives, and it just it makes more sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> that it, way. it's fantastic. Thanks. So uh, aspiring artists who maybe see numberism or maybe even see your work, what kind of advice would you give them or encouragement would you give them? So for me, I've been an artist my whole life. I'm self-taught with that. And I think the thing that changed my life as being a professional artist was being sincere. So mm. for an, that's not just with my technique. It's just for a long time I was creating artwork so that it would be good enough, right. so someone would like it, so it would be good or pretty. Um, and then I started doing work because I needed to express something, I needed to get something out of me, and I needed to gain what creating the pieces would give to me. And that was the first time that I saw people responding well to my work consistently. Um, so be sincere. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Sienna. Hey, where can people reach you? Where can people see your work? Um, you can find me at the Portland Saturday Market every Saturday and Sunday. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I think it's Sienna Morris Arts. And my website is fleetingstates.com. 
leadingstates.com. Well, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you. You too. Thanks. See you guys later. Thank you.